Hello. Purpose of today's video lesson is to discuss finding the distance from a point in three-dimensional space to a line also in three-dimensional space, and we'll be using vector equation to represent the line, and we'll be using the coordinate to represent the point P. There's a lot of moving parts here. It's not necessarily difficult, the mathematics behind the problem. What's difficult is keeping track of everything and making sure that you know which vector is corresponding to which geometrical representation. Personally, I advocate using GeoGebra, GeoGebra Classic. I use GeoGebra Classic because I didn't feel like learning the new form, um, but it's probably better. But anyway, I use GeoGebra. I'll even show you the simulation that I set up. It's right here. Um, so I have the uh, vector equation of the line written here. As you can see, it's got uh, um, the start vector and uh, lambda and a direction vector. So that will be this line here. And then I have the point P. And I have the point Q, which is essentially the intersection point between P and the line. And what I did is I made the line generalizable, and I used the parameter M to represent lambda in this case. And uh, you can see if I move lambda, or M, it's going to change where I am on the line. And you can see the angle formed between the line and my ray is changing if I move to a different spot on the line. So of course what we should know, and we should understand intuitively, but also just know this, that the shortest distance from a point to a line is going to be the perpendicular distance. That's the distance along the perpendicular. I can see here that I can get close to a perpendicular, but not exactly. Um, I'm trying to get it to land on 99, but it just doesn't seem to want to. There it is. All right, so um, this is as close as I could be. It looks like uh, when M is around 0.6, we're almost perpendicular. Um, so I can already anticipate that uh, the lambda in my line, uh, or T, whatever your parameter is, is going to be uh, somewhere near 0 0.6 in order to make this work. Um, but anyway, to get the actual algorithm sorted out, um, I always find a, having a picture to look at is huge, really, really big idea. And also differentiating between uh, what is a point, like point P is written in coordinate form, and what is the vector, OP, which would be written in vector form like this. So um, when I say P, I'm just talking about the location P. When I say vector OP, I'm talking about the same three components, but written in columnar vector form to refer to this vector here. So that's vector OP. Um, I'm going I'm to need that, and you'll see why in just a second. Uh, vector R represents any vector that gets you on this line. And so I took the starting vector and the direction vector and created a single position vector for every point on the line, all determined by T. So if I change T, that's going to give me a different point along this line here. So this vector is a fixed vector OP. This is a changeable vector OQ, and it changes as I change time. It changes over time. So I'm interested not in OQ or OP. I'm interested in PQ. I'm interested in the vector that goes to the line. So I remember my vector um, algebra here. I can uh, subtract OQ minus OP, and that will give me PQ. Uh, that's another lesson for another day if you don't know how or why I did this. Suffice it to say, to find PQ, I subtract uh, OP from OQ, and I get this new vector, again, contingent upon the value I choose for time. Whatever I choose time to be, it's going to make the PQ vector different. Sometimes PQ will be this way. If I change time, PQ could be this way or that way. Um, so this vector right here is going to be clutch because that's the vector that should be ideally perpendicular to this line so I can find its distance. In order to do that, we have to first acknowledge that the line itself contains a velocity or direction vector. This is the velocity vector, the one uh, um, that's kind of like the slope. And uh, so this vector gives me the direction of the line. And this gives me the direction of point QP, or PQ rather, I'm oh, sorry, of ray line Q, PQ. And if I dot product the direction vector with any vector from P to the line, I will get the closest distance. Sorry, let me start over. What I mean is we'll get the, we'll get the closest distance from PQ to V when PQ is perpendicular to V. So this is PQ and this is V. If they're perpendicular, well, that means that their dot product must equal zero. 
So the velocity vector and the PQ vector must be perpendicular in order to get the distance from the point to the line. Dot producting yields a simple linear equation, and I get T equals 7 over 11. 7 over 11, you'll probably notice, is a little bit uh, bigger than 0.6. So it seems that when I looked at this picture and I said when uh, time is 0.6, we're close to being perpendicular. Uh, if I go a little bit larger than 0.6, it should make me perpendicular. Um, so we'll see. So it looks like I'm probably right here, but again, this is not the answer to the question. This is simply what time does it take to get the vector from P to the line to be the shortest possible vector? Then I just need to find the magnitude of that vector at that moment in time. So PQ minimum exists when T equals 7 elevenths, so I substitute 7 elevenths in for T, but notice I have magnitude of PQ minimum, which is the magnitude of this position vector. So I just write magnitude of the vector, and the next part is the revised Pythagorean theorem, and I yield 66 over 121, both multiples of 11, so it's 6 over 11 simplified, square rooted. This right here is the minimum distance that I seek, and um, feeling pretty good about that because of that GeoGebra that I put up, but I just wanted to lay this out for you to make it absolutely clear. In my GeoGebra program, I have the uh, line CD is written here, um, and then I have the point P, and then I have M. And what I did is I physically typed in 7 over 11, and it gave me about 0.64, which, we, again, we know is reasonable. And at that value for time... The, the length of PQ will be 0.74, and I worked that out. The square root of 6 elevenths is, in fact, near 0.74 when rounded. And that does indeed show me a 90-degree angle. So um, not only is this video supposed to show you uh, the algorithm for finding the distance from a point to a line, but also to advocate for using some 3D graphing software like GeoGebra um, or some other free software um, so that you can visualize and check your answers so that you're not sort of blindly feeling around in the dark. To quickly summarize, though, if you, uh, in order to find the distance from a point to a vector line, you need to first express the vector line as a position vector, which, is a, which will be dependent on the parameter t. You need to also find the uh, position vector from the point to the line. Then you need to dot that position vector from the point to the line with the velocity or direction vector of the line. Should set it equal to zero to make them perpendicular and use that t value to create the vector pq that will be the smallest and calculate its magnitude. I hope you find this helpful. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.